Hi everyone, so I'll be explaining how this project works. So basically uh, we are using this um, Compose Multiplatform template. If you go to JetBrains Compose Multiplatform, here is a um, little tutorial about how to set up all the environment. So currently iOS is on, on alpha, so if you go to this repository for iOS, you will see that this has a template to use, right? So this project is based on this template. I recommend you to set up the template and follow along with the um, tutorial here. So after just um, cloning this repository, the next thing that you need to use is kdoctor. So basically kdoctor will tell you if your environment is okay to start using Kotlin Multiplatform. For example, if you don't have uh, the latest Xcode version, uh, maybe you will find some, some error problems right here. And you will need to find the solution uh, searching on Google. Basically, there is no like a, a hub for every error, but for now, kdoctor just prompts the the error problem for you, so it will be more easy to debug in the in the future. So, um, after seeing that the project is already compiled, um, this is the project uh, extractor. So basically, we have the Android app uh, package, we have then a shared package, and if you see, we also have the iOS app package. So this project uh, starts from the shared model. So if you go to, for example, the common main, you will see that inside the Kotlin folder, we have all the project architecture, right? So we have the data layer, the DI for dependency injection that currently is not working on the project, but uh, we will fix that. Uh, then we have the domain layer, model, uh, navigation, presentation, UI, etc. right? So, for example, uh, all the project is based on Jetpack Compose. So if we go to the UI and then we see, for example, this expense screen, um, we will see that all the Jetpack Compose code for the screen um, that shows the expense list is, is right here. So let me compile the project to see, um, to show you how this screen is rendered. So if you see, this is the expense screen, which is this one. And then if we click in on every any of these um, items, we will go to the did expense screen, right? So if we go, for example, to add expense screen or edit expense screen in this case, um, we'll see the code for um, this particular screen, right? Okay, so how do we preview this two screens because if you see right here in the shared model, shared um, package model here, we are not being able to see the preview, right? So uh, I think there is a way to just preview um, the screens right here in the shared model, but for me, it was easier to do it on the Android app model because Android app model will run all framework related libraries and for example, previews in this case for Jetpack Compose. So I have created this preview package where you can see um, all the previews from this Jetpack Compose code inside the, um, the shared model, right? So you can code right here in this model and then just preview it uh, right on the Android app module. And so after that, um, we have this main activity that is the entry point for the Android application. So for example, if you uh, run the app on Android, you will see that when you click run right here, it will open the main activity and the main activity will set the content to be the main view, right? So you are maybe thinking what is the main view? So the main view, it's just a connector that we have. If we go to the file right here in the shared module, you will see that inside the Android main package, we have this um, main view um, composable that is being opened inside the main activity. So from the Android framework, we are telling Android to just render this view 
coming from the shared module, which is the main view, right? And this main view it has all the code um, that uh, the app uh, uses inside this app composable. So if we go to the app composable here, and we see um, where it's located, it's inside the common main module. And this is the entry point of all the view, right? So for example, here we define the top up bar, the icons for the top up bar, then uh, we have the state which tell us, okay, if we go to the other screen, we can just change the title and then just change the icon for going back. And that's it, right? Uh, after that, we only have a box which inflates the navigation here. And if you go to the navigation, you will see this is the same as Jetpack Navigation Compose. You will see the nav host with different scenes, um, which are the destinations for this app. So if we go back to this main view, what it's doing is it's just opening this composable right here. And from the framework related package a model right here from the Android a model, we are inflating this, um, this composable, right? That is inside the share folder. So that's how this works on Android. So maybe you are telling now how this is working also on iOS because we are running um, just um, compose code here in Android. So how can we do that on the iOS? App. So if you go to share a model here, you will see this package called iOS main. That is the same as this Android main one that we saw before. And, we, and if you see here, there is a method called main view controller, right? This is the same thing as the main view on Android. You see it's a composable that returns another composable that is the view. If we go to the main iOS app, this is exact, exactly the same thing is opening this composable, but it's not marked as a composable. This is because um, inside uh, Xcode, I mean, inside the content main of uh, the iOS app, we are inflating um, this composable inside, right, inside like a, a container, right? So let's see how this is opened inside Xcode. So let me see if you go for example, to the iOS app and you go right click here on the Xcode project and then you open this with Xcode, you will see that Xcode, it's open with the current iOS project, but this project is not compiling right on, uh, on Xcode. So that's because it's uh, failing to address this reference to the shared folder because shared folder, it's in between Android and iOS, this is inside another project and it cannot link some resources. But if you see, this is the main entry point for the iOS app. And what we are doing here is just inflating um, the composable screen inside a container. Let's see this as, for example, like a web view, right? So this is inflating the Jetpack Compose um, screen. This is the same one as in Android, and if you see this method, main view controller, is called from here. This is the main view controller. So if we go right here, the package is iOS main, main iOS.kt, KT. and if we go here, we can see main iOS KT, this is the, the file, and then we open the composable view. This view is managed by the UI view controller, that's why we um, don't need to use the composable uh, annotation tag here. And this is handled by iOS by itself. And that's it. After that, we, the only thing we do to the view is just in, ignore the safe area. And this is just to see the white top up bar as Android. So if we then go to the iOS app and then we just run this, this one, and uh, we will see that the app is exactly the same as the Android one, right? And that's because it's inflating the, the, the same view uh, that Android is using inside here um, in, in iOS, right? So this is how it works 
uh, behind the project, I mean this project. And if you need to add any code to it, the only place that you need to um, only write code for is this common module. And here is the view model that is also shared between the two. And there you have all the other data, right, to, to modify if, if you want. Um, the only thing that you need to know about the project structure is that you cannot use, for example, dependencies that rely only on Android and you maybe want them to work on iOS. That's not going to happen. You need to find a way uh, to find third party um, compose multi platform, sorry, Kotlin multi platform libraries. So, for example, if we go to the share folder, here are uh, the dependencies defined for each of the frameworks. Let's say if you want to load maybe something inside only the Android main, just framework specific, um, you need to add it right here. For example, the preview. It's only available on, on Android, so we only use it inside the Android main. Then, um, for example, this um, common main source set contains dependencies that are shared between Android and iOS. You need to find, for example, a library, like if you want to load an image for, from, from a URL, you will need to use Camel, because Camel is a Kotlin multi-platform uh, library for opening image from the internet. And if you use, for example, Coil for this one, um, it only will work for Android and not for iOS. And that's why you need to use always libraries that are Kotlin multi-platform um, ready. So in this case, serialization is handled by Ktor. And yeah, we use Ktor basically for any serialization related stuff coming back from or backend, for example. Um, if we need to use, for example, a view model or a MBBM pattern, we need to use this MBBM compose library, right? Uh, let me see what else. Uh, but I think this is all. For example, for navigation, we use this pre compose library that is the same as Jetpack navigation. Um, it's really nice and, yeah, pretty straightforward to, to learn it. Then, um, I mean, this is the main Gradle folder that you need to, a uh, file, sorry, that you need to to pay attention uh, for. I mean, if you need to add test for iOS, you can just add test also for Android and so on. But basically the idea of the project is you write the UI once, let's say right here um, on the shared model, and then you open that UI inside Android, like here in the main, main activity. And inside Xcode, you do the same by just grabbing in the Jetpack Compose UI inside this container. This is the only code that you need in Xcode to make the project run, right? And that's it. If you want to make a PR, then just push it and let's discuss it, uh, how to make this, this example better. Thank you.